everybody, it's Jago here with the Shot Clock Podcast, the start of season two of our podcast, and what better way to kick it off with Irish, Glamour, UL, NUIG, and finally Mary Legends, somebody who's come up on, I'm going to say, 60% of the teams that have been named. <laughs> Michelle Fahey, welcome to the podcast. If only people knew you, how busy how this you? has been. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Four hours in the day, that's what I always oh, say. Look, we, we got there eventually, and what a way to yeah. get to start season two uh, with yourself. Um, so, Thank I'm you. so, look, up until now, the, the, the opening question's kind of always been how did COVID treat you? But, like, we're, we're kind of out of that now. So, what are you looking forward to now that the world is opening back up? As I said to you off camera, I saw some lovely holiday shots of you in and around Sligo um, with your friends, with Trish and with Vicky. So what's what's next on the agenda with the world opening back up? Just um, doing the things we couldn't do when COVID was around. I suppose like I brought Will, my little lad, and my man to NYG Mary men's game on Saturday. Just to go to a game, I brought the kids to a senior or more camogie match. Like to be able to, I think during COVID we 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 missed them and I suppose took them for granted going to sports like that or even going meeting your friends like like we did in, in Sligo, Vicky and Trish um, had a lovely weekend away and just just get back to living again. COVID is tough. Um, it's good to see people again, conversate and yeah, start living again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right, so we're going to go all the way back to the start. Who, what or why inspired you to play basketball? And that's a long time ago now. Um, suppose... <laughs> We, I started basketball, I think it was in sixth class, you know, kind of in P and stuff. We, we did a small bit of it, but as soon as I got to first year in Palo Sanchez College or more, the wonderful Joe Shields was there, of course. Um, Joe was given so much of his time to basketball in Ormore, and um, there wouldn't be as many All-Irelands there um, if Joe wasn't there. So he's, I have to give him an awful lot of credit. He volunteered so much of his time and... He's a wonderful person, and I'm just delighted he's he started me on this on this road, <laughs> long road. It's, it's it's been a long road, but look, as we said again when we were talking off camera, the friendships we we made, you know, all the way up through through our basketball careers are still there now, and will go on for years to come. And I think coming out of this pandemic, one of the main things I've seen is the amount of kids who are trying to get into a team sport. Because I think parents realise that team sports are the way to go as regards socialisation, you know, and just people learning their, their role and their place in life. Yeah, it's so, so important. Like, I, if, if my kids were never good at any sport, I just want them to try it and just to be a part of a team. It's not about being the best. It's not about working so hard at a, at a sport that you, you fall out of love with. Like, it's just, yeah, you work hard, but as, as we talked earlier, the, some of my teammates from the under, most of my teammates from the under 15 Irish team, which is a long time ago, I'm still great friends with now. And you know what, in difficult times, and we've all been through difficult times, they come up Trump, like they're there for you no matter what. And I, as I always say, basketball is more than just a game. The friendships you make out of it are so worth it. They really yeah, are. Absolutely. Completely agree with you. So you've played with some legendary players over the years um, with Irish teams and with your club teams. Who's been your favourite teammate and why? This is probably the most, the toughest question I had. I was, I've been mulling over it for weeks now at this stage. Um, I had to kind of divide it between imports and Irish because there was just like, I could write 50 people on each list easily. Like they've all been incredible on and off the court and um, support on and off the court is, is brilliant as well. But my favorite, I have to, I couldn't not, couldn't pick one. So I have two for each, if that's okay. <laughs> um, for the imports, um, Rachel Van der Waal, I played with her in UL, Canadian slash GB um, Olympian as well, GB Olympian. Incredible, what a player, like a point guard. I think we just read each other very well in the court. We kind of knew her, where we were in the court. Um, I knew she was, she's an all-round athlete and she's, she's always the fastest on the team. So handy for me if I ever got the ball and I saw her even neck and neck with her, with her um, defender, just throw it ahead, she would catch it. So 
it was just I loved playing with her she's so smart and, and intelligent player and she was brilliant and then Jennifer Strong as well I played with she's our American for Glenmire and just like an awesome player but so lovely and nice and funny and brilliant off the court as well and we still keep in touch to the to this day thanks to Instagram and, <laughs> and Facebook and stuff but yeah Jennifer Strang or Rachel Vandewell I couldn't couldn't pick between the two of them so they're my imports they won't mind me calling them imports but um Irish team then like how can you not pick Lindsay Peach <laughs> she's Very just true. like a wonderful friend, a wonderful teammate great crack um, all around athlete, obviously, and Susan Moran. So I couldn't pick between um, Lindsay Pete and Susan Moran. Sue, so, um, I played with her in, I just remember the trips in um, Daegu in Korea for the World Student Games, and she was just like, first time, first trip away with her. And of course, we were all in awe of her because she's, she's Susan Moran, like the career she's had. And <laughs> just, I, was, I was just so, yeah, I was so impressed at how humble and grounded and normal she was and she's the ultimate pro like and wonderful person so yeah Susan and Lindsay can't pick between the two but like look god the list I had I played with Glamire, Mary Breen, Neve and Granny Dwyer then Denise Walsh down there as well Fiona Scally and uh, Louise Galvin and UL, Suzanne McGuire like and then our, my guard teammates how can I not say Mary Gardner, Katrina White, Angeline Myers like I could go on for hours. Yeah, look, teammate. you're the one who can make all the apologies for the people that you've left out. That's that's not on me. That's the great thing. I can now step back and say, look, that's what Fahi said. I I've no I've no control yeah. over this. My phone would be hopping. Yeah, wish, wish angry messages now. Absolutely. But look, what great teammates. Um, Rachel was yeah. something else. She was just incredible. And then to come back from was it her cruise that she tore? And still came. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. She's, she's still, but look, she's so focused and so determined, and but just so grounded and lovely. And like to come back after an ACL alone to be just kind of walking and stuff is is an achievement. But she's back playing pro again, so that just yeah. that defines her. It just it proves what kind of person and an athlete and person she is. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So over your years, who's been the toughest person for you to guard? And then on the flip side, who played um, the toughest? It's the same person. So um, when I played, I played at Iona College in New York and we, Manhattan College, were in our league, in our conference. And there was a girl there, she's actually uh, English. Her name's Rosalie Mason. And she was 5'10", maybe. So like when she's warming up and stuff, I was like, okay, small post bear, happy days. My God talk about an athlete in in the off season she used to do track and field so she would do sprints and she'd do like long jump high jump yeah that talent that quickness and strength on a basketball court no hope <laughs> she was just the strongest fastest player I've ever played against um the only way I, I could get a few scores on her were to fake her because she, she loved going for the blocks so just fake her and she'd go up and open under or get a foul or whatever but she was incredible incredible and she like she had to mark me I had to mark her and she had to mark me so it was an all out battle every time we had to play them Brilliant. I think it was two years to play them she was she might have been in third year when I was in first year so um, yeah that was that wasn't fun <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of like your time in Iona you went over you were a four year athlete over there um, how was it going to a small Irish college just you know, outside New York, mm -hmm. we didn't have social media, no. you know, to make a phone call home was a chore. You know, how did you keep grounded and how did you keep, how did you keep sane? Um, yeah, it was tough. I remember the first year, first time going, I was kind of, yeah, of course you're excited. It's the, the August you'd be going, but I remember when I came home for Christmas, I didn't want to go back. I was like, no, it's, it's a new culture. It's new new it's been away from home like I was 18 at the time and I was like oh god but I remember my aunt God rest her Kathleen Tracy came to the airport with us at Christmas time and she literally pushed me through security she's like oh. <laughs> yeah and, and the loveliest woman most amazing woman you'd ever meet but she knew she probably knew I'd regret it and pushed me through and 
That woman was amazing. She sent me an email every single day for four years over there. Wow. It was emails. There was no Instagram, no Facebook. I sound like we're back in the stone or something. I know, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Reality. Yeah, and there was, like, keeping in contact with, with people was hard. All you had was an email, really, like, because phones and, like, your phone plan and you might not have international, you might not have international text or whatever, and I probably couldn't really use it back then either. I'm not, not good with technology, but... It was hard, hard like that, but I lived through those emails every morning. She could be talking about anything, the news, the weather, but I just, I loved it. I loved seeing, seeing the emails coming through. But then come year four and I graduate and I'm like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to go home. I don't want to leave. <laughs> you know, how do you win? Like, and then I just went, went, had the opportunity to play in Switzerland. So I, I said, yeah, why not? So that's my attitude anyways. I was always like, yeah, sure. We'll try it. Give it a go. Try it. Go. And you can always come home. So. Tip, typical yeah. Irish attitude. Asher, sure, look, I'll give it a go. And if it doesn't yeah. work out, sure. Give it a go. At least I've tried. That's exactly it. Yeah. I still have a key to the front door. Yeah, I'll be grand. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. I love it. So, you and four others going to a pickup game. Who are you taking with you? Um, I'm picking. This is another hard question. Good this is a nightmare gosh. question. Knee <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Neve Dwyer, Rachel Van Der Waal, Jennifer Strong, and Susan Warren. And I could have picked maybe 40 other teams, but look, I have to pick them. And I turned off my phone now in case I get any text. Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a serious five. You are playing yeah. against Suzanne McGuire's five. Suzanne actually picked six. Mm-hmm. I think she snuck a train yeah. <laughs> in there as a six man. I think everybody does. <laughs> I pick her as the six man too. Definitely. Look, we'll, we'll stick her in. You know what I mean. I like to keep her on side. Yeah. She's she's refereeing. That's one one less phone call, angry phone call. I guess today. I'll hopefully, it's two. hopefully I won't get here. <laughs> so, Lock your door. That's exactly it. Oh, we had her. She refereed on on um, on Saturday night. She yeah, fantastic. She's just she's an she old, is an like, old ref. She'll like she'll yeah. talk to you. You know what I mean? She's, she's not. Amazing, amazing, she was, a, yeah, amazing player. But I think Reffin is, she just like a duck to water. She was brilliant. She is a brilliant ref and knows the game. And is, she's so fair. And yeah, I'd have loved if she had refed our games down, back in the day because she's yeah, absolutely, fantastic. yeah, she's cla- absolutely class. Remember, I've said this, yeah. Katrina. So I need 50 50s <laughs> air on the side of me. Thank you. <laughs> 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 so over the years, superstitions, did you have any or was it more of a pre-game routine that you got settled into? Um, no, I'm a weirdo like that. Like I love number nine is, is my my baby, shall we say. Um, I don't know how it happened. I probably, probably just got it as a number in school or Irish teams. I don't know. But um, then I played, I had 54 in college because the, the refs only use one hand student signals. So five plus four is nine. Woo-hoo! <laughs> and I was like, and I, I got hurt in college. I I fell and had a, I tore my meniscus. So I needed surgery. So then I was like, this happened because I'm not wearing number nine. This is, this is going out of my head. So, um, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. But anyways, um then we were playing um Luxembourg, an Irish friendly up in Tala. Was I'm almost positive I was wearing number nine, and I just caught the ball at the top of the key. And Maeve Holland was the coach at that time, and I was so excited to be coached by Maeve. And it was kind of one of the, the earlier um games, and so I'd just come back from college and stuff and caught the ball and went to go left. And I just kind of tripped, stumbled, and put my right foot down, sat myself falling. Broke three bones in my foot. So I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> the whole, oh, I, if I wear number nine, I won't get hurt. <laughs> went out because, yeah. But um, I love, I since college, I'd always wear spandex under my shorts. Um, I had kind of a navy, pair, navy or white pair. Um, have to wear them. But then after I came back, after I broke my foot, I'd have to wear two pairs of socks. <laughs> you know, uh, I suppose, like, if, it, if my foot slipped at all in the boot, it would just pain to be unreal. So I think the two pairs of socks helped me. So that kind of became one of my superstitions. But yeah, I'm a weirdo, I know. <laughs> We're a weird bunch. We're a weird bunch. Like that's, yeah. that was kind of one of the, like, the prerequisites when I said I'd go back and play. And I was like, well, I want number 13. And I was like, oh, but yeah. like, 
Martins wears mm. number 13. I was like, right, I'll fight him for it. And the lads are looking at me going, yeah, what? Yeah. No, no, I'll fight him. Like, I don't mind. Arm wrestle, wrestling. I don't care. I, I need me number 13. Yeah, yeah. Well, freak me out if I don't. And, I win. and the other thing was black yeah. socks. So I'd, I'd, I'd forgotten that you ha- everyone has to wear the same colour socks in the Super League. So yeah. heading over to the first game on Saturday, message comes into the group. Everybody got white socks? No, nope. I don't even own white socks. Oh, you're going to have to. So quick trip to the Catalan on the way to the game for a three pack oh, of no. white socks. Yeah. But like mentally I'm going. And when they're fresh and not washed. Yeah. yeah. But like that in my head I'm going, can't, can't play in this. Can't play in white socks. <laughs> They're socks. Yeah, I only play well when I wear black socks. But that's yeah. it. I'm like, yeah. like absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. But I've had, I, yeah, I've had, I've had many, I, I've had many arguments with, well, not arguments, with Trina White and Granny Dwyer because they're both nine as well. So <laughs> they've often just handed me the number to say, thank you girls so much. But it's easier. Yeah, it's easier to just hand, hand the legend the jersey. There you go. You take that. No we'll, way. We'll you probably feel in. sorry for me. So just <laughs> So, back to back to footwear. What are your favorite shoes of all time? If there was a Michelle Fahey personal oh, edition gosh. shoe, what would it be? Flip flops. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I was never like name brand. I wouldn't know oh, Kobe's KD, whatever. It was basically whatever boots were in Champions Sports in Galway or <laughs> Elbury Sports. Honestly, it was like, oh, do they, do they look nice? Yeah, I like the colour. Do they fit? Do they have my size? Yeah, and then that was it. But I remember I had Penny Hardaway runners boots. Um, I probably didn't even know who Penny Hardaway was. It was just they were in Champion Sports, so my parents got it for me. But um, they were the most comfortable boots. And like, as I said before, my memory is so bad, but I just remember them being fabulous. And I got a pair since um years ago and they've been in my wardrobe at the bottom there um haven't worn them but i'm kind of half afraid to wear them because i don't know oh unworn you they go nice with your black socks <laughs> they would go nice with me black socks they're lovely so yeah i haven't i i don't know i just haven't worn them um i got them because i remembered the the other penny hardaways were so comfy but <laughs> I'd wear anything, anything, honestly. It's, I'd have to try it on. <laughs> and um, normally, my brother lives in Baltimore in the States, so anytime I go over there now, it's just Lovely. stuck. Yeah. That's, that's the way to do it, Jess, yeah. straight down to the outlet. How's it going? What have you got for me? Absolutely. $20, that's, give me six. That's there. right. <laughs> <laughs> so are, they, are they the ones you're yes, going to win now for the Masters? Oh, Christ. Above. I don't even know. <laughs> I, don't, I've, I think I... The ones there that I probably got along with travels. They all have cobwebs on it. I haven't played in so long. So we'll see. <laughs> it's, it's been a minute for everybody. That's exactly it. Yeah. Right, yeah. so we're going to change lanes a little bit. Top five musical artists of all time. Um. Okay. I love Pink. <laughs> Guilty. Um, Adele. Uh, Whitney Houston. And then I have to um, even up the whole gender issue. Uh, Lewis Capaldi. <laughs> I think he's, he's, I love his music. Oh, and Sam Smith. Lewis Capaldi. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I just think he's great crack as well. <laughs> love his song. <laughs> I'm more like, I like the songs as opposed to the artists. Like if the artists had two good songs, it doesn't mean I love all their songs. It's, it's the songs for me more so. So they, that group there, pretty good songs. I was the party. My God. Like you were winning. All right. point. I was like pink, yeah, <laughs> decent, yeah. Adele, absolutely amazing. Whitney, 100 percent And then <laughs> it was Capaldi. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I suppose I have tickets for him next next summer, so that's really why he's in my head. <laughs> that could be that could be it, all right. So I'm I'm actually scared to ask this question now after that, you know, bombshell at the end there. I'm afraid to answer it. But you're the DJ. What three <laughs> songs are we warming up to? <laughs> um, I remember in college, I used to have Lose Yourself by Eminem on my playlist. Just the beat, you know, it just kind of gets you riled up for the game. Um, Dirty by Christina Aguilera. Again, the beat was brilliant just to... Um, Boost the adrenaline and ring the alarm by Beyonce. 
it's not one of her more known ones, but it's it was deadly. Claire and I used to love it. So. Well, they will be up up on the podcast playlist now. Aren't yes. <laughs> Woohoo! You see about will basketball learn and play it next next time we're all uh, warming up. So maybe after, not dirty, but the other ones yeah. yeah. So after your career and look your life experiences, what advice would you give to a sixteen year old Michelle Fahey if you could sit her down now? Um, just don't worry about other people's opinions. Don't worry about what other people think. Um, be happy in your own skin. Just be yourself. Do, do what you want to do. Once you, as, as the, the teacher in my school says, you give respect and you get respect. Just be respectful. Respect yourself. Respect other people. And find something you love. Whatever it is, work hard at it and just try your best every day. Like, I think some parents out there put a lot of pressure on their kids and um, to try not only at sports and school everything once your kid is happy at the end of the day mental health is more important than anything I think um, after the few years we've had anyways and Absolutely. just be happy make memories every single day and just love and live your life excellent excellent advice for anybody not just a 16 year old anybody don't yeah, yeah. yeah. be happy in your you own skin what's, what's around the corner uh, you, you, and you yeah. really don't and the last couple of years have really proved that you know what I mean yeah definitely. so second last question um, and this this is the one I always love I love to see where people's heads go on this one so dead or alive <laughs> boy of dinner guests you'd invite to your house friends family are famous who is sitting down with Michelle I, I can I'm gonna uh, guess course. two I'm gonna go I'm gonna go <laughs> off the bat I'm gonna go first two I'm gonna go your dad and Claire. I picked Claire anyways, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with the other people that we bring, my dad would be like, who are these? So <laughs> we'll give you we we'll give you an extra chair, Michelle. There's an extra chair there so you can get oh, them in. Fair enough. I'll bring my dad back. So yeah. Dad and Claire, of course. Um Adele, because I just think she like I've seen all her concerts in Ireland and she just seems like the best crack. Um, even the what's the thing with James Corden carpool karaoke carpool she karaoke seems, she was amazing one of your friends yeah and just up for the crack and lovely and so talented so I think she'd she'd bring a lot of fun to the dinner table um, Diana Trazzi the GOAT like greatest of all GOAT. time she's just yeah brilliant I'd love to pick her brain and see how it works basketball wise and and off the court as well she seems she seems kind of did you see the other day she she yeah, flew home on the private jet. Her wife gave birth at half four in the morning. She was back in the team hotel yeah. at seven thirty for practice. But that's that's Great different level. Of time, kids. That is different. Yeah, level. Yeah. There's no man. There's no she man doing that. <laughs> no. <laughs> or he's he he's there beside her asleep while she's going through labour. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, she's brilliant, and I just think she'd be. Um, a good a good basketball brain to pick kind of and I picked the last two would be I just love them I know I, I don't know Barack and Michelle Obama I think what they did for America was brilliant and I think they're just such grounded people and that mixture of people at, at the dinner table we'd have good conversation for sure absolutely Adele I can't wait for a new album to come out and I can't believe I just admitted that uh, on, a, on a podcast but <laughs> I went, I went to see her in London and I have to say it was one of the best concerts I've ever been at. Mm-hmm. And like that afterwards, yeah, I was yeah. like, I'd love to go for a beer with her. <laughs> yeah, she's just funny and good crack. And we saw her in Dublin so twice and just class. Like you, you, You'd be laughing as well as enjoying the music. So but That was it. She played her three quick songs like early on in the set and she was like, right, that's all that out of the way so we can all go back to crying now. Get your tissues. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Jesus, okay. Cool, thanks. <laughs> yeah, she was Where's just, my Kleenex? She was immense. Yeah, yeah. Like, for one person to command that stage and you're yeah. transfixed for the whole time. Like. And kill it. Yeah, yeah. And, and her voice. Yeah. And just okay. behind it all, I don't know. Does she like the big stage? And she she'd be kind of nervous and shy as well, like doing all that in front of people. But what a talent, unbelievable! Well, it's like a switch goes off in her head. She just walks on, and that's it. She owns it for yeah. the two hours, yeah. and then heads back to her dressing room for a 
bottle of Chardonnay or whatever she's back drinking. Back to her kids. Yeah, and being a, back to being a mom again. So. Back to being a mom, yeah. Like, but Diana yeah. Tarazzi, like, what, what the hell? Yeah. Play a game, fly, fly back. Well done. Yeah. Push, push. Fair play to you. There's the baby. I'm going back to the. I'm going back to the game. And then she did another yeah. game last night as well. Yeah. Just yeah. Adrenaline will probably get you through some of it, but she's just class. Like I love. She was asked one time, "What do you want to do when you retire?" And she's straight out, "I want to own a team. Not just run it or be a coach or whatever. She wants to own it. She wants to be the best in the business. So like." And she will. Yeah, shows her mentality. Brilliant. Yeah, she will, absolutely. Michelle, thank you so much for giving me up your time. I know it's taken us probably a year and a half to get this going, but your look, we got you it in the end. Um, last we question. We did it. As I, say, I said to you before, sorry, yeah, go on. Oh, go on, go ahead. As I said, as I said to you beforehand, yeah, obviously we couldn't do the last time because I had car trouble, but and I told you, the car was, was kept outside, not moved or anything, and I, the kids tied up downstairs, so... Few more minutes well, left. You go and left. You go and left. I'm joking. Them. Nana has them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you untie them or like let Nana untie them now, and they can get back to running right yeah. in the bed. Last I question: know. Who would you like to see on the podcast? Uh, you have to get Susan Warren on here. Oh, I'd absolutely love to. I'd love to. Yeah. Again, I said to George Suzanne's um, interview, not enough people know the greatness. Yeah, Susan Warren. That's not the line, yeah, yeah. Her story needs to be told. Yeah, that like the, the younger generation, the, the 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds coming up now mightn't know of the extent of her career. Like incredible. Like what was she? She's playing with her school in a cup final, and I think they had scored 60 something points and she had 50 something of them. Yeah. Like, and just an incredible workhorse. Orla Dempsey was there with her as well, but just, but I loved off the court. She was just so grounded and so normal and just so lovely. Treated everyone with respect and nicely. And she's, she's, she's doing so well in the States and have her two little kiddos as well. It's, yeah. it's probably to see. Yeah. She's, she's oh, it's brilliant. She's look, she, B.I. should be talking more about her. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not just us. Yeah. Basketball learning should be getting her over and picking her brains a little bit more as well. Like you don't get to coach at that level yeah. and play at that level if you can't, yeah. you know, give something back. So yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll yeah. definitely try and definitely. get her on. That's that's your little. We'll, we'll peer pressure her into it. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work with didn't work with Sharon Kelly. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. We'll get there. We will get the ma- there. The ma- next Masters tournament. We we'll love. We'll I'm just going to rock up with a microphone. <laughs> Listen, Michelle, Stewart, please do. <laughs> um, you go and unlock the kids and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Take it easy. <laughs> Thanks a million. Thanks no for